In the final part of our show today, we're going to visit an organization that helps a community whose members are generally not there by choice, but often as a result of hardship. It's a community that we might find ourselves avoiding exposure to, the homeless. Fanny and I are going to take you down to the New York City Rescue Mission, a place that I've been grateful to volunteer at for the past two years. In addition to providing meals and beds to those in need, the New York City Rescue Mission offers a 12-step recovery program for guys looking to get their lives back on track. Oh, there he is, Mr. Little. Hey, welcome back. Hi. Thank you. I decided an excellent person to interview is Joe Little. He's a PR director of the New York City Rescue Mission. And let me tell you, Little, well, maybe that's not the most appropriate last name. At well over six feet tall, Joe has quite a presence. It's not just a 12-step residential recovery program. There's work rehab. There's chores to do to run a rescue mission. They get up early. They go to bed early. There's cooking. There's cleaning. There's laundry, laundry, and more laundry. We feed o- over 500 meals a day. It's like a small hotel here. So they're, they're getting into some good habits that many of us in the regular population need to have. To see that every day, that's the, the great pattern and the great habit and the great normalcy here. To see that is, uh, is I, I like coming to work here. So this was my first time at the rescue mission, and I wanted to go downstairs to the kitchen and get my hands dirty. So that's when I ran into Pedro. He is a recovering addict who runs the kitchen, and he makes sure that everything happens. It's a really big operation. They serve over 200 people at dinner time. <laughs> that clicking sound is the sound of the, of the counter. We count the people that we serve. All right, so the first thing that we do here, we put an apron on you, we put a hairnet or a hat, depending on whether you're a man or a woman, and, and we'll put you to do some, um, some chores, either cutting bread, serving food. Give me 215. We made about 550 fish cakes, 35 pounds of macaroni salad, and we had about 18 pound kernel corn, uh, mixed mescaline, tomatoes, onions. In the kitchen, you have to prep stuff. You have to have certain stuff, you know, ready at a certain time. So I think it gives us um, a time and responsibility and work ethic. So, yeah, I think that's what it does for them. Some of them have to get up early at 4.30 in the morning or whatever time. You have to be here, like like I told my guys to be here. If you says 2 o'clock, I want you here at 1.55. We're able to provide a good meal to anyone who comes to those doors. There's the working poor, the poor that's homeless, the poor that's just above, you know, that, that, that proverbial pay rate. So we just provide a service for them. I mean, I've seen people come in here, successful people, writers, everything, and they've just come, thanks for providing the meal. I needed it, so... It means everything to me, in other words. For many people who eat at the New York City Rescue Mission, it's not just about a hot meal. You're getting more than that. You're being part of a community. You're seeing familiar faces. You're getting served a little bit of love. It's not just a belly full of food. That's 69% of it, but 31% of it is uh, is chit-chat and conversation. And someone and whoever is, is serving you the food, smiling and saying good to see you again and I hope to see you tomorrow. Homelessness is partly a state of mind and partly being without friends, being without fellowship, being without family. And and so we're we're partly a, a family here and also trying to get folks back with their family. rescue missions would love for you to stop by and have a meal. It's a very, very good thing and you don't owe them anything. You don't owe them donations thereafter or volunteer hours. It's a very good thing to just be a presence. That's that's hearty stuff. It's healing. It's yeah. healing stuff. Tim is a resident in the recovery program and also the kitchen captain. I've had the honor of working alongside with him in the kitchen for the past few months. I think when you're helping other people there's so much to it that you don't even realize about yourself or about the people you're helping that it kind of opens up doors in your own mind. I tell volunteers all the time, they see your heart, they see your hand. To them, that is awesome. Somebody who's taking the time out of their own life to do something for them. It's what we do from the heart, and what the heart is to make sure everybody eats. We don't judge them, we feed them. That's what we do every day. We do it seven days a week. It's a lifelong walk. I'm, I'm graduating in uh, January, and uh, I'll be done. And God will open doors, and I'll move on, and hopefully whatever I do and, and continually do is service for somebody else.
When you have a bunch of people in one room, all for the same purpose, without dealing with each other's issues, it works. And, I, and, I, and it's awesome. You feel it. it, it I'm not going to tell you it's easy and it gets a little hectic and that quick hour and a half you got to feed 180 people. But at the end of the day, there is peace in your heart. Uh, I have peace for the guys we fed. Hope they'll be back the next day. And, 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 and there's hope that everybody's life is going to get better. The, the rescue mission movement, this idea of serving the whole person. You know, you're big into serving the whole person, and uh, and that's what we've been doing since 1872.